picture of the beach where I grew up when I was a little boy. I lived here from about age seven to when I was 18. And I used to swim on this beach almost every day. And the rain, I love the rain because in the rain, the difference between the temperature in the water and out of the water is much less. So it's much, it's much, it's not cold when you swim in the rain when you get out of the water. And I used to swim in the, of course, the summer and the winter. And like you can see on this beach, there's not many people on this beach. And when I used to swim on that beach, I'd, if I saw one other person, I'd stand there and go, who is my beach? The beach is about two kilometers long. So, and you know, it, looks, it looks like paradise. It looks like it's very, very different from, from Hong Kong and most beaches around the world. And, uh, and I've got many, many uh, memories from that beach. I used, to, uh, I used to run down that beach and let's see. Okay. Run down the beach, and this is the lake at the end of the beach. I used to run down that beach. I run maybe five kilometres, uh, and then down the beach, dive fully clothed into this river, and then swim out the other side of the river with my shoes and my clothes on, back over the hill, and then ride around the highway and come back and do it again. Uh, I did it. Uh, I enjoyed running and I enjoyed the attention I got from people who thought I was crazy and where did this guy ever come from. But whatever it was, it motivated me to be very fit back in those days. And uh, one day I was on that beach and I was swimming as I've done you know, hundreds of times before and I just caught the wave into the sand and I turned back out to swim into the water and this is what I saw. In fact, in fact, it was it was even bigger than that. The water was up to my neck. The water was up to my neck, and I just you know I turned back out into the towards the water to swim back out. The water was up to my neck, and this shark was my head. So, so you know, it was you can imagine it was very very scary. I wasn't a Christian back then, but I think I learned on that day how to walk on water. <laughs> I got out of there so fast, I can't remember touching the ground. <laughs> and and though, you know, though we'd seen, you know, I'd seen sharks uh, washed up on the beach before, there have been sharks washed up on the beach before people had caught sharks. I'd never come face to face with a live shark and it was very, very scary. Um, I'm fortunate because when I, when I got out of the water, uh, a few minutes later there was a school, or it's called a pod, of dolphins that was chasing the shark. And dolphins can kill sharks. So I believe the shark was actually not interested in me because he was trying to get away from the dolphins. <laughs> dolphins, uh, they've got very uh, blunt nose and what they do is they, they swim and they hit the shark in the, in, and the shark gets paralyzed and when they're paralyzed they can't, they can't move through the water and in order to breathe they have to move through the water so they, they will suffocate and, and drown if they get hit by, by a dolphin. So, even then, I think God had his hand on me. But I'll never forget that experience with that, with that shark. And you imagine, you know, you're swimming on the beach. It's a paradise. You know, the, the whole world would love to be able to swim on that beach. And you're having a nice time. Life is wonderful. You're playing with a ball. You know, the, the, the sand is clean. The shells on the beach. You haven't got a, a worry in the world. Um, but what would you do if somebody came and put a sign on the beach? <laughs> what would you do if somebody came, we're having a nice time, and somebody came and they put a sign on the beach? Would you get angry with the person who put the sign on the beach? Or would you get, would you just ignore the sign and just keep on playing and having a, a wonderful time? 
what would your what would your reaction be if you saw the sign on the beach? You know, that's exactly why Jesus gives us the gospel because he wants to give us a sign that warns about the sharks and the dangers in our life. When we see that sign, we shouldn't be angry with the, the, uh, the guy on the beach who is there to put the sign up. And we shouldn't be angry with God because they're just there to give us protection in our life. They're there to give us warnings in our life so that we can truly have a safe life and a life that, that, that God designed for us. Going the wrong way. That's why on the beach, there's usually, if it's a patrolled beach, there's flags on the beach. There's usually two flags and you're told, instructed, to swim between the flags. Because if you swim between the flags, it's safe to swim between the flags. You know, another time I was swimming um, and you know, I was enjoying myself, having a nice time, and, and I wasn't looking at the beach. I wasn't looking for the flags. I wasn't looking where I was going. And before I knew it, I'd been pulled by the current a long, long way out into the, into the ocean. I was, I was, before I realized it, I was probably maybe you know, 100, I was actually it was closer to a kilometer out in the ocean. And I was trying to swim back towards the, the shore, but the water that was dragging, this is called a tide or a rip, was, was taking me out into the ocean. And then suddenly I realized that, you know, I remember what I learned, well, you're not supposed to swim directly to the shore, you're supposed to swim sideways to get out of the rip and then go into the shore. But if you're not walking out for the flags, if you're not looking for the safety zone in our life, before we know it, we'll get pulled into a situation where we're in over our heads in our life and we can't control the situation. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about where is that safety zone in our life and for me all of the answers are in, well, are in Matthew 5. All of the answers are in the Sermon on the Mount. And today I'm going to, uh, to talk about, there's six examples here. I'm going to mainly reference one of them. But I'm going to read through these examples so that you see the consistency with the way that Jesus teaches about the law and the way that he contrasts that with how the Pharisees were teaching about the law. See, the Pharisees were respected. They were having a nice time on the beach. They were enjoying their life. They were respected by other people, gave them money. People looked up to them. They came to them when they had problems. But Jesus wasn't interested in any of that. Jesus condemned the teaching of the Pharisees and he compared and contrasted that his teaching or his um, his fulfillment of the law in teaching the the the, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments versus what the what the scribes and Pharisees were teaching. Let me just read through this, and you can you can see the uh, you can see the, the 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 comparison. In all six cases, it says, "You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder." For example, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But Jesus says, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. You can see. And then the next one, that's all about murder. The next one is about adultery. You have heard that it was said. This is what the Pharisees were teaching. You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in his heart. There's one about divorce. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her the victim of adultery. See, the Pharisees had a 
habit of twisting the Lord's commands to make it suit their lifestyle, to make it convenient for their lifestyle. They said um, that if they wanted to dump their wife, all they had to do was make sure you give her a certificate and then, oh, and then everything will be fine before God. But that's not what God was saying. God was saying that two, two come together as one flesh. And therefore, the only reason for divorce that's suitable in God's eyes is if there's fornication, because those two flesh is torn, that, law, that, that rule is broken. But even so, God is saying it's not an automatic reason to divorce, or it's not an automatic reason to get revenge. He wants us to forgive. He wants us to live and to love our neighbors and to, to love our enemies, as it says at the bottom. But in, our, in the scribes and Pharisees' world, they said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus said, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus always wanted to take it further than what the scribes and Pharisees uh, had to teach. And for that, he called them hypocrites. For that, he called them, uh, he called them, he told them that, that they were not suitable to be in that position. Yeah. Uh, Brother Sully was teaching us about spiritual stealing, sophistication, uh, sophisticated stealing and spiritual stealing. Never actually heard of sophisticated stealing before, but, but these are all ways that we twist the law to suit our lifestyle. We, we, want, to, you know, we want to keep on having fun on the beach and we're not keeping our eyes on the sharks or the sin that's in our life. Weary enough because we're more focused on, on having fun instead of the dangers that lurk all around us. So the reason Jesus came was to direct our attention to the law. He gave this teaching to direct our attention to the law so that we, we flee from the sin in our life towards the grace that he offered to us through dying on the cross. But only after understanding the law will we make that decision. So, very quiet again, it? it's always quiet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not long, okay, now the scary thing for me, maybe for you, is that Jesus said, in verse 20, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of God. And that's what he's telling us today. Unless we live a life that's not hypocritical like the scribes and Pharisees, then we, as said, the um, King James Version says, in no case shall you enter the kingdom of God. In no case, if we live a life, we play on the beach, we, we create this deception about what the law and sin is in our life, like the scribes and Pharisees, no case shall we enter the kingdom of God. This is the sign on the beach that, that's warning us about the sin in our life, the dangers that are lurking all around us. Where are the flags in our life? How do we know whether we're living a, a life that keeps us safe so that we keep and enter the kingdom of God? Or how do we know when we're outside that safety zone, outside, we're not between those two flags? How do we know when we're safe? How do we know when we're not safe? Well. I want to look at the, the first of those six examples. And that's why every day we have to turn back to God. Verse 522 says, Whoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. And why? Why is it bad? Why is it wrong? Why is it unacceptable in God's eyes to call someone a fool? Because 
it distracts us for the, from the purpose of why we're designed in God's world. It distracts us from loving Him with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. It distracts us from loving our neighbour the way that we should love ourselves. That's why, that's exhibiting an attitude which he condemns. So, if we have scorn in our, in our life, if we, if we have uh, anger in our life, if we, you know, if we always, if we're saying something to somebody, and I can, I have work people and I can say names, but have you ever met somebody, they say something to you, I'll, I'll be there, I'll be at church next Sunday. And, yeah, next Sunday comes and goes, and you see them the next week or a month later, and, oh, I'll be there. Oh, not just church, or anything. They say something, and it's like they never said it, because they never honour their word. Or, they, or maybe, I didn't promise, I didn't promise it, so, you know, I, I just said it, but I didn't promise it. God's world, in God's commandments, if we're living between the flags, then our yes is yes and our no is no. There's no grey area. <laughs> so, basically, the scribes and Pharisees had righteousness that re was rejecting the grace of God. They were saying, we can do it on our own. We don't need the grace of God. We've got the answers in our life to do it on our own. But they were distorting the truth to suit their own circumstances. So, is it ever right to be angry with somebody? Yeah, Jesus was angry with the scribes and Pharisees. It's natural to be angry, but when is it okay to be angry and okay not to be angry? Well, when Jesus was criticizing the scribes and Pharisees, he was differentiating between the sin and the sinner. He was acting in a judicial manner as, as judge when he was criticizing the scribes and Pharisees. He, wa he wanted them to repent their sin and to live for God. He wasn't trying to glorify himself or make himself feel better or, or you know, defend himself by putting other people down. And when I talk to my, to my mother, my mum my mom has um, uh, Parkinson's disease. No, it's Alzheimer's disease. Thank you. Sorry. I'm, I'm, my memory too. And, and it used to be very, very frustrating when, when, you know, I, I talked to her, and, uh, and in a 15-minute conversation, she would say, "Yeah, how are the children? And how old are the children? And how's the weather?" She'd say it maybe 10 times in 15 minutes. She'd say it, and then she'd repeat the question like 60 seconds later because she can't remember what she said. In the beginning, frustrating, but. Then I realized that this is not really my mum that I'm talking to anymore. You know, this is a disease that, that has taken over my mum's mind. And I was able to be more patient with her and now I enjoy my conversations with her. I still answer the questions exactly, you know, honestly every time. But I'm happy just to be there with my mum. And I'm not judging my mum or trying to put my mum down because because I differentiate between the disease and the person. Yes. Jesus was differentiating between the sin and the scribes and Pharisees. So if we, if we're truly, uh, if we need to speak to somebody to uphold them, to point them towards the law, and with, with the right motivation, not a self-centeredness, and we're doing it. Uh, after praying about it and, uh, and asking for God's wisdom, that's okay. We're salt and light in the world. But if we're doing it for the wrong motivation to glorify ourselves, then that's the same. That's living no better than the scribes and Pharisees. 
So here was basically Jesus rejecting the false religion. The religion is, oh, I love the God, I love Jesus, make me everything that you can. But then going out that door and living a hypocritical life, <coughs> not according to the to, to, to the the standard that he's instructed us to live in our life. Well, we would we? Would we? <coughs> so, okay, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> you know, about two weeks ago, I had uh, I had to meet uh, a new client. So, um, I got up in the morning and you know, I was quite excited to meet this new new client. And I uh, I chose my best suit. I, I put my I had my breakfast. I chose my best suit, my tailor made suit, and I I chose my tailor made shirt. I chose my nice red favorite tie that, that makes me look very professional. <laughs> and uh, made sure my shoes were polished, my black shoes, and and uh, I went out, when I walked out of the door, I felt you know pretty. Pretty sharp. Yeah. I was ready to take on the world, and uh, I walked down to the MTR, my suit, and my tie, and my, my shoes, and and I was feeling pretty confident. And as I walked down the steps uh, into the sta into the station of the MTR, I had this this terrible thought, this scary thought. I'd done all of this to, to make myself look good, but I hadn't combed my hair. <laughs> and I'm going down the stairs, and suddenly I stop going down the stairs. Oh no, I haven't combed my hair. <laughs> and and I, yeah, do, I, do, I, do I turn around and go back? And, and to, the, to the home, or do I keep, I'll be late for the meeting. So I, I walk slowly down the stairs, I'm thinking, what do I do, what do I do? And the train pulls up in front of me, and as the train pulls up, I can see my reflection in the window. <laughs> and I had an even worse revelation. It's the only time I've ever had this, first time I've had this. The revelation was, it didn't really matter when I came my head. You know, in, in our mind, we're, we're young forever. In our mind, things don't change in our life. But I had this revelation. I couldn't do that. It didn't matter whether I had my head or not. Undeniable fact. You know, it's not coincidence that I turned it off. No, it's not coincidence that Jesus teaches us this is the way we should pray. Let's pray this together. Let's say this right now. One, two, three. Then this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. He didn't write it there for us to ignore. He wrote it there because it's the, it's the flags on the beach. It's a sign on the beach that keeps us, that keeps us facing towards him. This is how we know that we're between the flags on the beach. If we're conscious of these, they seem simple things because we've been Christians for a while. But they're not simple things. They're real dangers in our life. Our greed is overcome by acknowledging that we have a daily bread. Our temptations are overcome. And we become more uh, aware of our temptations and sins by asking for forgiveness every day in our life. But sometimes we have a righteousness. Oh, we don't need to say that. We don't have to do that. I've got more important things to do. I've got to rush to a to a, a Bible study or to a home group, and I've got to learn about God, learn something important to say. But I'm not dealing with what's inside of me. It's not coincidence that God wants us to pray this. That this is instructed by Jesus. 
The reason we don't is because we truly don't appreciate the cost that Jesus paid on the cross and he died on our behalf for our sins. We, we split the sins, good sins, bad sins, sophisticated stealing, spiritual stealing. A sin is a sin, a yes is a yes, a no is a no in God's eyes. There's no in between. Only by looking every day back at the beach, look at signs, those flags, can we stay in between them? I was lost, but you knew where to find me. I was hungry, you were bred.